It's best 11 time once again. Welcome back everyone to the latest part in this series where we show you the best players to ever grace some of your favourite clubs. Who's been your favourite team so far? We've seen some crazy lineups, including partnerships like Kenny Dalglish and Steven Gerrard, Pat Jennings and Luka Modric, and not least George Best and Cristiano Ronaldo. But of all these fabulous, fabulous Premier League all-time 11s, who is the greatest of them all? Well, before you come to that conclusion, you should probably listen up because you're still yet to hear from the current champions of England and Europe. 2023 is the year of the City Treble. That's right, once just noisy neighbours, now European treble champions. Pep Guardiola's Manchester City are racing their way through the record books and etching their names into history one triumph after another. But who makes it into their greatest ever side? Ederson has been the first name on the team sheet for Pep Guardiola for a solid six years now, and we are thinking exactly the same. Still, at just 29 years of age, Ederson might go on and do over six more years between the sticks for City. The Brazilian was brought in specifically for his ability to help play the ball out of the defence, keep possession and mount counter-attacks, as he does all of that as well as shot-stopping fantastically. He has three Premier League Golden Glove awards and perhaps more to come. At right back is the Argentine, Pablo Zabaleta. Formerly of San Lorenzo and then Espanyol, Zabaleta enjoyed a nine year spell with the Sky Blues before finishing off a sparkling career at West Ham. But it was in Manchester that Zabaleta became a key part of the dressing room that would strive for trophies. He won six with City, as well as 58 caps for Argentina. He was even named in the PFA Team of the Year for the 2012-13 season. Beside Zabaleta is a club legend and current Burnley boss, Vincent Kompany. Captain of Belgium and City, Kompany was a beast on the pitch. It's fair to say that no striker enjoyed the notion of trying to take him on in any kind of battle. The World Cup semi-finalist was a legendary captain at the Etihad, who led City to 12 titles in 10 phenomenal years at the club. Kompany was a mountain of a defender and a figure followed by all, players and fans, during his time at City. John Stone slides in beside him at centre-back, now a long-term success at City too, and more recently a centre-back turned central defensive midfielder. John Stone's played a crucial role in City's recent treble success, playing as a hybrid centre-back off the ball and centre-mid on it. His big money move from Everton seemed like it might have been a mistake for some time, but the England man has proven his worth, and more than that. His tall frame, quick mind and ability on the ball make him an all-rounder to suit a Pep style of play. At left back is the Frenchman Gael Clichy, an Arsenal player between 03 and 2011. Like some other ex-teammates of his, Emmanuel Adebayor and Samir Nasri, eventually he found himself in the sky blue of Man City. Clichy provided pace and width on the left as City honed their game, attacking with wingbacks like a prime Barcelona. He won five honours with the club. In the midfield, is there a bigger club legend than the little Spaniard David Silva? A player probably liked by everyone, including his rivals. Silva was a key part of the Spanish dynasty that rocked world football and a key part of City's rise to the top of the Premier League. As a youngster in Valencia, his skill was clear, and in England, he never failed to leave opponents in awe whilst linking up with the likes of Sergio Aguero at the Etihad. His eye for a pass was at Javi levels, and he had magic close control just like Iniesta. Impossible to catch, even though he wasn't that quick, David Silva was one hell of a football brain. Alongside the little man, we'll go with some muscle, in the form of Yaya Toure. The big Ivorian arrived at City having won a Champions League before, at Barca, against their rivals United, so the Sky Blues fans didn't need long to warm to him. He captained the Ivory Coast to African glory in 2015, and for City, he was a marvel. He won three leagues with the Sky Blues, was four times voted the African Player of the Year, and in the 2013-14 season, he hit new heights, scoring 24 goals in the campaign, even being named Club Player of the Year amongst a talented squad. He even had his own song, but we don't remember how it goes. In the middle, it has to be Kevin De Bruyne, perhaps the jewel in the crown that is Pep's city side. He is the link man, the creator and the man for the big moment. 
his unbelievable goals last campaign in the league against Arsenal and the Champions League against Real Madrid were beyond crucial and well worthy of any highlight reel. De Bruyne! De Bruyne deserved this treble triumph. Mind you, he had already won everything but the Champions League with City. His eye for a pass is unmatched and his execution is almost always perfect. He cannot be given a second outside the box as no other midfielder has a strike quite as ferocious. On the wing we're going with the player who very much announced a new era for Man City. That's Rubinho, the man that they hijacked from Chelsea in what was as much a show of financial power as a football transfer. City's oil money era was embodied by this red carpet signing at the time. A message to competitors. In terms of results, Rubinho wouldn't stay at the club long enough to see a trophy, but in a much changing team, he brought a Samba spark that many City season ticket holders had never seen in their team before. Rubinho's inclusion is one of symbolism. He showed City fans a glimpse of the future, a glimpse of the money. Coming from Real Madrid, some think that he might have even impressed more, and when he left City, his career went downhill. But some of the moments of magic he produced on the pitch were Ronaldinho-esque, and the dawn of a new era was there for the Sky Blues. Perhaps the easiest strike partnership to choose in the history of all-time 11s. These two names picked themselves, and I tell you what, if they had been able to play together, what a fantastic big man, little man partnership that would have been. Perhaps literally unstoppable. Move aside Crouch and Defoe, this upgrade comes in the form of Aguero and Haaland, two assassins in front of goal. Despite only being at City for a year, Haaland has won the treble and broken the Premier League scoring record already. Sergio Aguero, meanwhile, is a club legend despite never really even learning English properly. But nobody in Manchester cares. He scored the most famous goal in recent Premier League history and City's history when he won the title in the very dying seconds on the very last day of the season. In doing so, of course, stealing the trophy from neighbours Manchester United. Aguero! Staggering! Argentine was small but uncontainable. Electric pace and a ripper of a shot with no backlift meant he was pretty much impossible to defend. Speaking of impossible to defend, what about the big Norwegian? Is there anything he can't do? He might even break all the records again this season. We wouldn't be surprised. So what about this for an all-time 11, eh? I know what you're thinking. They've pretty much all played in the last 15 years. What do you mean all-time? That's true, but so is the fact that City have announced themselves as the best side in club football with their recent historic success. And whether we like it or not, that's the reality. Maybe they will go on to even bigger and better things. Either way, what a team. Do you think the likes of United, Arsenal, Chelsea or Liverpool can take on this best 11? Or would City beat the lot? It'll be close. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.